What's up and welcome to the Dual Sense Podcast. This is episode 112, 112. I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Jason, and I'm joined as always by your other co-host. His name this evening is Dick Luber. <laughs> <laughs> He's also known as Travis. Travis, what's up? Not much. Do you remember Dick Luber? Oh, I do. I still have the picture on my phone, my friend. Um, do we have to tweet it out with this episode? Dick Luber I will. is... That's a good idea. Just a synopsis. <laughs> Dick Luber, College Hoops 2K8. Shout out to College Hoops 2K8. Don't even remember what team it was, but me and you both always struggled recruiting, and this auto-generated player was called Dick Luber. I think you sent it to us one day, and I think I died. Like It was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen, just because it's so yeah. out of left field. Like You know that they, they left it programmed like that. <laughs> 100%. 100%. So, that's that's not an accident. Yeah, um I want to give a shout out to my favorite anchor podcast aside from ours. Oh. Um it is called Concrete with a K. Um you okay. should definitely definitely check it out if you can. The guy interviews all kinds of people with very interesting lives or histories, uh, belief systems like he did a, a one with uh, some mafia people. Uh, did one with a guy who was like a, the most wanted cyber criminal in the world. That was a pretty cool one. And oh, that's cool. Segways into I've been listening to one about ancient technology, which is what I was texting you about last night about the pyramids in Egypt. And I've okay <laughs> always had these long standing. So when I was a history major, one of the things I hated about it was there there was ever no ever room for discussion. Like you know, like the world. As we know, it started 6,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, and everything happened in a linear fashion, and we've always been progressing upward, and that always bothered me because nothing works that way. Sure. One of the things I never understood about the Egyptians was they always would talk about these pyramids and how these massive structures and temples and statues were built at the beginning of their, like, of the at the beginning of the dynastic period, right? Mm-hmm. never understood that like why would you start off with the most difficult thing and then never do it again and right i could never wrap my head around how they built them or and not even that like how do you polish how do you polish stone to such a yeah to such a point that it's still reflective and smooth and shiny and like you know like my stepdad worked in stone for like 30 years and he's like yeah if you polish it like that it'll last you know a couple hundred years maybe maybe if it's outside definitely not it's like we're talking about a couple thousand yeah what are we talking about so anyway (laughs) i really like the theory he brought up which was that uh in a nutshell they call it like the the uh the lost civilization theory not like atlantis but like there was some sort of civilization before that had some sort of technology so basically the pyramids and all the statues and stuff were inherited they were heirlooms Mm -hmm. not from aliens like let's calm down you know but i think i from the history channel Yes, but like it's easy to imagine that if you, you know, if, if we redid Darwinian evolution with the same set of circumstances, you could easily see how it could play out differently. Um, just randomly, sure. like something weird would happen. So in my head, like, you know, there's they found DNA, they found tombs with DNA in it that dates 15,000 years ago, and in that tomb is pottery. So, like, that pottery mm-hmm. and art are civilization. That, that's duh, right? They weren't hunter gathering. We didn't hunter gather from when we split off all the way until 6,000 years ago. So to me, it just seems like, yeah, there could have been a, a, an advanced civilization. Doesn't mean they had electricity, but I mean, they could have, you know, maybe they, maybe they knew how to make something that didn't involve a wheel. Well, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. point being, point being, it just makes sense to me that there was something that was mildly modern that got randomly destroyed by floods or whatever. And um, all the all the religion stories have have these stories in them that talk about these catastrophes. Mm-hmm. It all just made sense to me finally, sure. um, and I've been stuck in a wormhole ever since. You have been. You were you were texting me quite a while about this about your about your theory. And uh, for four and a half minutes there, we were well for four minutes or so there, we were a a history podcast. How about that? How long did I talk? There's no timer on this. I don't know how long we've been here. Oh, you can't see. Oh, okay. Wow, this is it. fun. Oh, Sorry, this is fun. It. I okay. Five minutes. Well, Sorry, before, guys. Before we go, should I tell them? I think I. I don't think I'll get in trouble. You think? Should I tell them the news? My news is I don't know when the NDA ends, but do you want to wait until you've passed through like, the first phase? Till, till I've like done something? Maybe I should. 
I don't know. Okay, okay we'll, we'll, we'll see what next yeah. week is. <laughs> we'll wait. Maybe they'll, yeah, we'll wait. Okay, anyway, guys, more on that to come. But uh, we're a PlayStation podcast, if you're here for some of that. And uh, Travis and I get together each and every week to discuss all things like news, rumors, new game releases and announcements, and a whole lot more in the world of PlayStation. And we do it all in under 90 minutes, of course. We post new episodes on Monday on all the usual podcast services around the world, as well as YouTube, where we also share gameplay videos. If you're interested in that, I just recently posted today a Saints Row gameplay video from my PS5. So that's there if you like. Travis put up uh, some Battlefield earlier in the week, I think, some highlights. So there's that too. Uh, But you can get the shows there as well. And also, if you want to find us and talk PlayStation with us, you can hit us up on social media. Our Twitter is at the DualSense Pod, and that, that is our main feed. But we're also on Instagram, where you can find virtual photography. And we have a Facebook page, which nobody uses Facebook anymore anyway. I really don't know why we have it, but maybe it helps in <laughs> SEO or some shit. But we also have a blog, which is called the DualSense Podcast.wordpress.com. We post the episodes there every week, along with the show notes. You can also see a little bit of a bio about Travis and myself and our beautiful pictures. So, Head over there if you want to see what we look like, if you think we sound stupid or sexy or, you know, you're just curious. All the above. What's SEO? Search engine optimization. Oh, my God. Okay. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's a whole thing. But, uh, yeah, Jesus we better get... Christ. <laughs> so we better get uh, going here, Travis. We've got, a, we've got a big one here. Hope you're ready. Hope you're ready. Here we go. Number one. Sony Interactive Entertainment announced on Thursday that they were raising the suggested retail pricing on PlayStation 5 systems in many global markets, blaming the price increase on high inflation rates and weakening currencies around the globe. After Sony Corporation increased the price on several consumer electronic products back in April, from Blu-ray players to cameras, the PS5 has now fallen victim as well and a bold move by the company's games division. The PS5 will increase by 10% to 20% in many markets across Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and even Canada. The only market currently not affected (laughs) by the price hike are these United States of America. In Europe, the price will increase to 550 euros for the disc edition and 450 for the digital edition. In the United Kingdom, the disc edition will rise to 480 pounds sterling and 390 for the digital edition. In Japan, the disc edition will go for 60,478 yen, and the digital edition will be 49,478 yen. How many yangs? (laughs) 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 Oh, that's good. In China, the disc edition will be 4,300 won, and the digital edition will be 3,500 won, or yuan. (laughs) In Australia, the disc edition goes to $800 dollary dues. Oh Sorry, God, Ryan. And that. the digital goes to $650 dollary dues. What is Sorry, it really again, called Ryan. over there? We've never determined this. No, he did. I, maybe I forgot. So I can now confirm Ryan reached out privately and he confirmed that it is indeed called a dollary due. No, so, it's, no, it's not. I swear to God. Let me find oh, it. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Forget, Nobody, I, what are you talking about? It's like when the British named that boat Bodie McBoatface. Like it's not a thing. Here it is, Ryan, Ryan Betson from For the Players Podcast in Australia. Dollary do confirmed. An international collect phone call costs around nine hundred dollars. <laughs> See? Anyway. Yeah, dollar do. So but down south in Mexico, Travis, the disc edition will run you fifteen thousand pesos while the digital will run twelve thousand five hundred pesos. Not even our friends up north in Canada are immune with their disc version going to six hundred and fifty dollars Canadian. And the digital going to $520, $520 Canadian. And finally, Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan himself penned the PlayStation blog post breaking the news to the world, which he ended with saying, quote, While this price increase is a necessity given the current global economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priorities our top priority, excuse me, continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that as many players as possible can experience everything that PS5 offers and what's still to come. Thank you for your continued support. End quote. Elsewhere, analyst Piers Harding Rolls, what a fucking great name. He sounds made up. <laughs> anyway, Piers is the research director for games at industry analytics firm Ampere Analysis, who is real. So, and he says that the price increase won't change much for Sony. Stating, quote, while we believe that there will be that there will be disappointment for some consumers that have been trying to buy a PS5 without success 
or that we're saving to buy the console just in time for the price to increase. The high pent-up demand for Sony's device means that the price increase of around of around 10% across markets will have minimal impact on sales of the console. We expect Sony's sales forecast for the PS5 to remain unchanged, end quote. And finally, it should be noted that both Xbox and Nintendo, Sony's primary competitors, followed up this news with official statements that they have no intentions of raising the price of their hardware. All right, what do you make of this? As our friend John would say, uh, that's a fucking L. (laughs) It is a fucking L. I gotta say, you know, at this point, after 111 episodes, I'm not surprised at all that Sony's raising the price after it's came out. Yeah. I find it disappointing as a consumer and a fan. The reasoning that they gave, uh, it makes sense on paper, right? global economy this that and the other i mean i I understand they're saying the things to defend themselves you would expect them to say it's just kind of hard to swallow um especially if you've been chasing one for a while they're so hard to find yeah and then as they suddenly start to pop up and get more what are going to call it the supply is yeah that's really what it's like right it's almost like the supply and demand balance has shifted Mm -hmm. and so they're raising the price almost to try to get the demand back where they want it since the the supply is so much more readily available now. Mm. I just, I just, God, it's just so weird to me. Like, you just don't see people do this. Companies don't do this with things very often when they come out. Sure. You know, car prices fluctuate. I guess we're used to that in that, in that realm. Food prices yeah. change pretty much all the time. I mean, I mean, I'm not counting sales and whatnot, but it seems like every time I go to the store, like, I never know how much fruit's going to cost or how much vegetables no. are going to cost. They seem to change. Correct. So, in a sense, I don't know, man. It's just this isn't for an object that cannot basically expire um, in that sense, mm. right? You know, mm. it, it's it's a tangible thing. It's not going to biodegrade in that sense, right? There's, yeah. there's no past due date on my on my PlayStation, so I don't know. All of that is just really irritating to me. I, I I'm not, I'm really not surprised though. God, it's just I'm just annoyed with the whole thing. Really, like. It's just disappointing, I guess, is, is kind of how I feel in a nutshell. I just I expected more from them, but I should have known better, I guess. Yeah, here's the thing. People were talking about after this happened, like, okay, where were you people at when, you know, prices on homes went up, cars went up, food went up, gas went up. The difference between all of those things and a PlayStation 5 is that all of those things in the past have also like we're used to those prices rising, like you said. We're used to beef going up, you know, when there's a when there's a beef crisis because they had mad cow disease somewhere, you know. We're used to gas fluctuating up and down. We're used to house uh, housing prices fluctuating up and down. Car price car price is the same. What is more unprecedented, as we've talked about on the show recently, is the prices of our consumer electronics going up after they've already released. Now. They go down every every generation, right? Eventually, you know, like the PS4 is whatever it is now, two hundred bucks or two hundred and fifty dollars to get a PS4. Now it was four hundred at launch, whatever. Like we're used to those prices coming down as they get older, as iPhones get older, PlayStations get older, whatever. Those prices drop, but the after the fact price increase on a piece of hardware that is two years old at this point is what is mostly unprecedented, and I think. (laughs) <laughs> to your point, I think it's a massive L. And the thing about it is that, you know, you and I have our PS5. So like we don't have any we don't have a dog in the fight per se. But the problem is is that it's like you said, the people who have been trying to get a PS5, they can't. Now they have to pay 10% more than they would have. Would they have just been better off maybe just paying somebody six hundred dollars on eBay and getting one? I you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what I mean, at this point, maybe you're better off doing that anyway. But the other thing is that this, above all else, is a massive public relations failure because within the same day, your two primary competitors came out and said, we have no plans to raise our prices. Now, Microsoft said it more definitively than than Nintendo. Nintendo essentially said, we don't have anything to announce right now. We're constantly evaluating, et cetera, et cetera. So, and of course, these are massive corporations. They don't always stick to what they say they're going to do. Very well could down the road, 
Xbox and Nintendo raise their price. They could do it. You know, not not unheard of. But for now, PlayStation looks like the bad guy. And that's the problem. And I think that right now they're flying high. People do want the console. And the PS5 is a great system. It's, it sells itself in a way. The games are going to be there. There's, they're there now. So maybe they're looking at this and they're like, hey, we can get away with this shit. Fuck it. Like, people are going to be mad right now, but we don't have to raise the price in the U.S. So that's like our, that's our biggest market. They won't be that pissed off. If, you know, if at all, they're not going to really care deep down. And that's really only because the, you know, the American dollar is so strong. So, you know, and everything else is weak against it right now. And I understand the economics of it to an extent, but at the same time, your competitors are not doing this and it makes you therefore look bad. It makes you look greedy and it makes you look like you're trying to get into people's pocket over a thing that they're going to play video games on. So just think it's a bad look above all else. You know, people have been crushing them on social media and I think it's deserved. Um, I don't, they're obviously not going to go back on this decision. Eventually the price will come down as things get better when they, like they naturally do when they cut console prices. But for now, this is the reality. Number two, in what appeared to be a social media snafu, an assortment of, of official PlayStation accounts across Twitter and Instagram revealed that the PlayStation VR 2 will release in early 2023. There was no blog post, no media interviews, no video, simply a photo of the headset and controllers with the release window. What makes the announcement seem even more like a mistake is that even 24 hours later and still to this point at the time of recording, the U.S. PlayStation accounts had still not shared that same announcement. Regardless of the intent, the early 2023 window lines up with what we have been hearing about the next-gen VR headset, with Ross Young, the CEO of Display Supply Chain Consultants, stating earlier this year that the rig was originally scheduled for 2022, but would launch early next year due to a delay. In addition, an analyst at TF International Securities also said back in May that he believed the headset would not start mass production late this year, with a potential launch in the first quarter of 2023. So what do you think about an early 2023 launch? What is TF International Security? <clears throat> it's just one of these it's just one of these companies that sits around and analyzes the stock market and it's somebody Fortune 500 pays companies and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like in Blue Streak when uh Martin Lawrence is like, you gotta look for the trucks with B Mark Bonding. <laughs> like, oh, okay, man. Yeah, sure, buddy. That's what funny. You say? Uh, fuck, I don't believe that guy anyway. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean Look, of course they didn't mean it to get out. Like, this is par for the course, though. This is how we do things now. Stuff gets leaked. And we talked a few weeks ago or a month ago about there's some sort of leaker in PlayStation that's letting things out. Clearly, it's still going strong. And they seem to have no loyalty about who it goes to. So that's interesting. When there's no loyalty, like, when the leaks are coming from different places, it makes me think PlayStation's doing it themselves for whatever reason. Like, Typically, when you have somebody with information that puts things out, they go to one source. Like, that's kind of the point. Like, uh-huh. they're paying you off or you're getting some kind of a thing out of it, right? Just to randomly have it go into different people. Like, well, I guess they could do a highest bidder thing. But, I mean, if you're if you're going that far down the rabbit hole for a highest bidder, like, it's going to get out that you're, you're the person. So, just weird. All of this is weird. But if this is true, early 2023, awesome. You know, totally into this. Like I'm excited about it. You know, the price tag is what will get me. It'll it'll hold mm. me back for a little bit, I'm afraid. Like, it's just hard for me to be like, yeah, whatever, 500 bucks on a headset. I, I'm not really 100% sure I'll even enjoy that. Uh, it's just a lot of money to invest in something I might not enjoy, but right. I'll end up with it at some point, definitely. Yeah. I love everything that I'm hearing about the headset, like we've talked about on the show. And I, I think that I, I think that I want one. My only reservation is this is about if I'm going to get motion sick playing it. For instance, if roller drum made me feel sick, what's PSVR gonna do to me? So I would hate to like buy something for four or five hundred, probably five hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> at this point with the it with Jim's inflation that uh I'm not gonna be able to use. So I don't know about that. But as far as the release window, totally adds up to everything that we've heard so far. Like we've talked about on the show before. I, they, I think they 100% wanted to have it out this holiday. They obviously had to delay it early next year. My theory on this is that it's coming in February, but March does make sense as well. I think the telling sign is going to be 
when we do get a PlayStation showcase, presumably sometime in September, is if they don't release, if they don't talk about PSVR 2 in that showcase, but then they also don't put any dates on a game for February, I think that's a telltale sign that PSVR 2 is coming in February. On the flip side, if we get a game that gets a release date, let's say The Last of Us Factions gets a release date for February, I don't think we're going to get VR then. I think we'll get it in March. Um, That's just my opinion on that. So Yeah, I think the only reason that wouldn't be true is if there's like a huge VR mode in the game they release also at that time. True, true. I it is it's I think it's they obviously I feel like made a mistake because the American accounts have said nothing that at least that I've seen about this and it's it's just like out there and they haven't like said fucking anything about it so it's just weird it seems like definitely a, a mistake somewhere I, I don't know how it could be a mistake across like multiple countries though so it's just it's a weird situation it's just add that to the the list of weird shit that PlayStation does it's like they just can't get all their ducks in a row number three during jeff Keeley's gamescom opening night live show this week playstation made a surprise appearance not with a game announcement but rather to reveal the dualsense edge wireless controller the edge is the heavily rumored pro style controller that we have been hearing about in recent weeks and it sounds quite robust it features fully customizable button mapping allowing players to remap or even deactivate button inputs as well as adjustable stick sense or adjust stick sens- sensitivity can't talk and dead zones each trigger can also have its travel distance and dead zones independently adjusted playstation gave an example of players being able to manually reduce travel distance on the triggers for faster inputs in first person shooter games or reducing the dead zone for precise throttle control in racing games the dual sense edge will also have the ability to save multiple control profiles which players can swap between on the fly in addition the controller will come with three types of swappable stick caps standard high dome and low dome and two swappable sets of back buttons half dome and lever which can be configured as any button input to allow more flexible controls as if rumored even the entire stick modules themselves can be replaced but will be sold separately the edge retains all of the signature features of the original dual sense like haptic feedback adaptive triggers and a built-in microphone and so on it will also come bundled with a USB Type-C braided cable, which locks to the connector housing to prevent it from easily coming out, as well as a carrying case, which can double as a charging station when it is plugged in. Despite all of this, no pricing info or release date were announced for the DualSense Edge, with PlayStation promising more to come in the months ahead. What do you think? Yeah, somebody will leak it in December. <laughs> I gotta say, like, our people are not walking around with a carrying case with their DualSense Edge in it. I'm just throwing the ball out right. there. That's not a thing sure. that's happening. It does look awesome. Curious about what the price is. I would assume, what do you think, $100 at least? I'd say at least 150 but more likely 200 Yeah, why not Why not gouge people while you're at it? So, I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, these dome and half dome things are pretty interesting. Like, there's so many variations to try to figure out what will work for you. Um, adjusting the dead zones. And the sensitivity is pretty sweet. We could kind of do that anyway with in-game settings, but now it's actually being able to do it directly on the controller, I think, is is really cool, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. And all I keep hearing in my head when I read this is, like, I, I still can't play games like Warzone because now these assholes are going to have controllers that are tuned. And, like, I'm not going to tune my controller, so this yeah, isn't going to work. Also a good point. You know, it's nice that... uh you know, they've added these dead zones. They've, they've put my heart into the controller, which is very nice. What else we got here? Throttle control for <laughs> racing games. That'll be okay, I guess. I mean, look, it just looks cool. It looks fun. Uh, I, the, the coolest thing to me is a USB cord that locks in. Like, that, that was the most exciting part to me. <laughs> All of this sounds awesome, but again, the problem is that this shit is getting pricey. Like, I'm going to have the $550 headset. Then there's the fucking 300 or VR headset, I should say. Then there's the fucking 300 audio headset now there's the 200 hundred dollar pro controller then there's the 100 hundred dollar uh backbone for the you know to, re- to play remote play on my phone so like i just can't do all of this stuff and the more and like as much as i want the dual sense edge and it looks and sounds awesome i just don't know how much it would mean to me because you know when i play call of duty i don't i just i'm just playing for fun like i'm not playing competitively you know, when I play 2K, I'm playing for fun. I don't I don't need all the extra buttons, I don't think. So 
I I don't know if this is for me per se, but it does does look awesome, and I think it's going to be expensive as fuck. So we'll <laughs> see. Number four, Gamescom opening night live was this week. Jeff Keighley's show on the 23rd. And uh, we had several game announcements, and we've got a roundup here of everything PlayStation-related that was at the show. The show started with a teaser trailer for open-world metaverse-style game everywhere from former Rockstar executive and Grand Theft Auto boss Leslie Benzies' studio, Build a Rocket Boy. That's the name of the studio. It is planned to release sometime in 2023. An investor document discovered earlier this year described the game as a, quote, real-life Ready Player One, end quote. Following the show... Fans discovered job postings at the developer indicating that it could include blockchain technology or NFTs, art noise, which the studio clarified were simply research-oriented positions tasked with looking into the new technology. After that, publisher Level Infinite, otherwise known as Tencent, and developer Funcom announced open-world survival MMO Dune Awakening. You can sign up now on the game's website to take part in an upcoming beta. And then after that, PlayStation announced the aforementioned DualSense Edge controller. Then we saw Callisto Protocol creator and director Glenn Schofield, who stopped by to share more gameplay footage of the survival horror game from Striking Distance Studios. Soulsborne-style dark fantasy action RPG The Lords of the Fallen, a spiritual successor to 2014's Lord of uh, the Fallen, was revealed with a trailer from developer CI Games. Moving Out 2 was announced after that, and it's launching in 2023 on PS4 and PS5. What would you think about that game? Did you watch anything on it? <laughs> Moving Out 2? Yeah. I saw the trailer of it. Did you like it? I think so, yeah. It looks cool. I mean, I thought it was going to be about a middle-aged man who got a divorce, moved back in with his parents, and then finally got <laughs> back on his feet. That's kind of what I imagined, but it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, we're not far off from having a game like that, though, is the thing. I thought you meant, unless you were just going to say, we're not that far off from that. <laughs> no, no. So after moving out to Warner Brothers Games, shared a new trailer for Hogwarts Legacy. They also announced that pre-orders are now open. We got a trailer for New Tales from the Borderlands from 2K. And we learned that it's releasing on October the 21st. After that was a Dying Light 2 DLC trailer called Bloody Ties, and it's launching on October the 13th for $9.99. And then publisher Calypso Media shared a trailer for pirate strategy adventure game Tortuga, A Pirate's Tale. Hell yeah. Which is, <laughs> which is coming to PS4 and PS5 in the first quarter of next year. Why is it called Turtle? I don't know. It's a great name, though. <laughs> After that, Destiny 2 showed a trailer for, trailer for their new expansion called Lightfall, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. After that, we saw a Sonic Frontiers gameplay trailer and learned that it is releasing on November the 8th, which was leaked before the show. Then developers Parallel Studio and publisher Quantic Dream announced a narrative underwater exploration game Under the Waves. After that was Goat Simulator 3. They brought a gameplay features trailer. Then a trailer for card-based first-person shooter Friends vs. Friends was announced to be coming to consoles. Another Soulsborne style game, Lies of P, which looks pretty awesome, and it puts a dark twist on the story of Pinocchio. They shared a new gameplay trailer, and it is launching on PS5 sometime in 2023. He uses his nose as a dildo. <laughs> it just fucks you right in the ass. Developer Deck 13, the developers of The Surge, announced fantasy action RPG Atlas Fallen with a cinematic trailer. It's launching in 2023 on PS5, and they have said that it is not as hard as The Surge or some of those style of games, like Soulsborne style games, it's more akin to Horizon and God of War, they've said. After that, developer Hoyoverse, also known as Tencent, shared a trailer for the next Genshin Impact expansion. And then developer Blackbird Interactive announced that space salvaging sim Hardspace Shipbreaker will come to PS5 on September 20th. <laughs> Not Shipbreaker, Shipbreaker. The Expanse narrative choice, narrative choice based game series from Telltale Games shared a new gameplay trailer. And it's launching sometime next summer. A Killer Clowns from Outer Space video game adaptation was announced, and it is a 3v7 asymmetrical multiplayer game launching in early 2023 on PS4 and PS5 from developer TerraVision Games. Developer Madhead Games shared a new trailer for action RPG Scars Above, which will come to both PS4 and PS5. Looks kind of like Returnal, like a poor man's Returnal. Developer Something Wicked Games announced their new RPG called it Wirosong. I think it's actually Word Song. Maybe it is Wirosong. I don't remember. 
Something Wicked Games is led by a former Fallout 76 project lead and 15-year Bethesda veteran Jeff Gardner. A new Gotham Knights trailer showcasing the game's villains uh, was shown, and Warner Brothers Games announced that the release date was has moved up from October the 25th to October the 21st. Wow, whole four days. Mm-hmm. Hideo Kojima confirmed that he was working on multiple games, but really came to announce he is doing a podcast series, Travis, called Brain Structure, exclusively on Spotify, with the first episode dropping on September the 8th. Same day as the PlayStation Showcase, probably. We're going to talk about that, too. Can I understand it, or is it in Japanese? He is doing a English dub, so there you go. Mm-hmm. Also, developer Limbic, Limp Dick Entertainment announced an amusement park building game, Park Beyond, which is coming to PS5 sometime next year. Uh-huh. Developer The Parasite and publisher Focus Entertainment announced first-person witchcraft action-adventure game Blacktail, which is coming to PS5 this winter. Love Blacktail. Hack- oh, yeah. <laughs> I love all tail. Hack and slash action game Phantom Hellcat was announced for PS4 and PS5. Survival horror game Outlast Trials shared a terrifying new trailer, although the game has not been confirmed for consoles, which would be weird if it didn't come because the other the other two have been there on PS4. And then the show ended, Travis, with both a cinematic and a gameplay trailer for the previously leaked re-reveal of first-person action RPG Dead Island 2. And it was confirmed to be releasing on, on February 3rd on PS4 and PS5 with pre-orders now available. Dan Buster Studios later revealed in a PlayStation blog post that press members at Gamescom would get to play a demo from the beta build of the game. So it's a good sign. But anyway, that's a whole recap of the show. Does anything jump out at you here? Um, yeah, Outlast Trials. I thought it was going to be a combination of Outlast and the Trials games. Like it was a horror game on a bicycle. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love the I love amusement park building games. Just And again, like I've talked about these before, but they're just like it's something you can just watch on YouTube. Like it's just. Or, you know, yeah. this guy builds this fucking wild thing. Like, I love those things uh, just from an entertainment perspective. I don't mm-hmm. have much hope in something we could games. Just any anybody who, I don't know, if you're like, hey, I was in on Fallout 76. I'm, I don't know. I just kind of, I don't really have a lot of faith in you there. <laughs> Makes you soft. Um, yeah, definitely. For sure. One of the games I thought was really interesting, actually. Oh, it was the first one. Yeah, the real life Ready Player One thing. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Build a Rocket Boy is a fucking great name. I love that. But I don't <laughs> really, really, you know, the thing about the metaverse is like, if, okay, why does like the metaverse look so shitty with the guys from Facebook? Like, aren't they billionaires <laughs> and it looks like a fucking Wii game? Like, anyway. That's a good point. Anyway, uh, but no, this sounds cool. I'm interested to see actually how it plays out. Like, God, it's supposed to come out next year. We're just now hearing about it. Like, I don't think it'd be cool. I'm excited. For me, the biggest game at the show was Dead Island 2. I'm so fucking stoked for this game. I really hope it's good. Please be good. Uh, the The cinematic trailer, you know, the cinematic trailers typically, you know, we're kind of whatever on cinematic trailers. Like, they, they serve a purpose, but they're not great. But this one was really cool, I thought. And then they showed the gameplay at the end, and it looked fucking awesome. And then they showed some screenshots from the game, and those looked great. And I also think that it's a good sign which is why I included it in here that they are allowing, first of all, press to play the game. And secondarily, that it's the beta version of the game, which are both good signs that it's doing well and that it might actually hit that February release date. So we'll see. And Tom Henderson uh, also a while back had said that he had heard that the game was in a, was in a good place. So there's all that combined. It seems like it's, it's doing well. So I hope that it, they can stick the landing. And then there were a couple of other ones that stood out to me too. Like you said, that Park Beyond game sounds interesting. I don't know what the fuck Hideo Kojima was doing there. That's That was so silly. I mean, I know he, him and Jeff are boys, but that was so fucking silly. And then there was something else though that stood out to me. What was it? Liza P looks really cool. And that's like been the most popular game at the whole show. We had seen like a teaser trailer before. It looks really cool. I might try it, but I have just... Souls, me and Soulsborne games... Those really hard fucking games, I just don't know. I don't know if I can do that shit, so we'll see about that. It did look great, though. Callisto Protocol looks terrifying. I, I don't think there's any way I can play that at all. I am very intrigued by Tortuga, Turtle, a pirate's tale, because it's a strategy game and it's a pirate game, so that's that's something a little turn-based? bit different. Uh, It is. It is mm-hmm. turn-based. I'm out. Sorry. Sorry about that. And then 
the the Dune MMO, a lot of people were kind of like, eh, about that. That sounds really awesome. The problem is that Tencent, the Chinese communists, are publishing the game. <laughs> so I don't know about that. And then I do agree with you. The first game we saw, the first game and the last game were the two best games that we saw, which I guess that's the way it should be. But that Everywhere game, really intrigued by that, other than the fact that they're wanting to include NFTs and shit in there. But the trailer for that, I don't understand what it is. I, 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 I really think that they were trying to do like a little bit of everything, which I guess power to them. But you're like, they were like driving at one point and then shooting. And then I'm like, I don't know. It was crazy. But uh, I'm really intrigued by that. I also don't think that it's releasing next year. I don't believe that for a second. So we'll see. Overall, though, the show, I would say it was pretty good. Not great is my kind of thoughts on it. Number five, Deadline was added again this week after scooping the Days Gone film last week, this time reporting Travis that PlayStation Productions has a Gravity Rush movie adaptation in the works at production house Scott Free Productions. Deadline claims that Anna Maestro, who directed Secret Society of Second Born Royals, whatever the fuck that is, is set to direct the film, while Emily Jerome, who previously wrote Panopticon, which which I've maybe heard of, I don't know, whatever the fuck, his script is writing the script. Oddly enough, the game was developed by now-defunct Sony Japan Studio and was originally released for the PlayStation Vita in February of 2012 before being remastered for PS4 in 2015 and later receiving a sequel in 2017. This seems totally odd to me. What do you think? Yeah, why don't we just make more games from, more movies from these games that nobody's ever heard of that got canceled 10 years ago or whatever? It's so odd. <laughs> I don't know. Like, okay. Let's raise the price on our PS5, but let's spend millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars making a Days Gone game, or I'm sorry, a Days Gone film Both for a game that we're not even going to green light a sequel for, okay? Then let's, how about this one? Let's spend tens of millions more dollars on a movie for a series, of, for a game that we haven't seen a new, new release for in five years. That is, at best, a cult hit. Like what in the fuck? I don't. I mean, I understand the Days Gone film a whole lot more than Gravity yeah. Rush. Like, yeah, Days Gone might have been better as a movie anyway, or as a TV series. Yeah. Like I get that, but like I don't know, Gravity Rush is a bit of a, a bit of a pull. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just sometimes I see these things and I just think these people in higher places, like they just have all this power. Maybe a dude up there just really liked that game, and maybe that's it. And also, in fairness. We don't have all the details, so maybe this is going to be an animated film, which that might work. You know, the, the game is an anime style game; it's a Japanese game, so maybe that's it. I don't know, but if it's anime, I don't know. If it's anime, it might work. Hell, yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm not a Gravity Rush. Never played. Well, I think I played a demo for Gravity Rush, so I know what it is. I understand what it is a little bit, but I just don't. I don't understand the appeal of making it into a film. But what the fuck do I know? Number six, while not outright PlayStation news, the chief executive of Xbox, Bill Spencer, gave an interesting interview to Bloomberg News this week in which he made some prescient predictions on the future of the industry as a whole, railing on about his longstanding mantra that games being available on multiple platforms was best for the long-term outlook of the industry. Spencer said that console exclusives are, quote, something we're just going to see less and less of. Maybe you happen in your household to buy an Xbox, and I buy a PlayStation and our kids want to play together and they can't because you bought the wrong piece of plastic to plug into your television, end quote. He continued with a veiled shot at his rival PlayStation, adding, quote, and maybe in the short run, there's some people in some companies that don't love it. But I think as we get over the hump and see where this industry can continue to grow, it proves out to be true, end quote. Combine Spencer's comments with PlayStation's rapid growth in the PC marketplace and focus on developing live service cash cows over the next half decade, is it possible to envision Phil's future for the industry? What do you think? If everything is one thing, then it's nothing. I agree. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, look, sure, that's a possibility, but what he said is stupid. Like, to basically say, and this is why he said it's stupid, what he said was stupid, you bought the wrong piece of plastic, so you should never degrade your product, whatever it is, to something that trivial. Like, Look, we've been there before, PlayStation versus Microsoft. What is it? Is it good? Is it bad? There's been points in our life where we've owned both versions of the new, quote-unquote, the, the current-gen console, right? But you can't say things like that 
one being the leader of Microsoft gaming like that like that's just stupid to say but also you can't say yeah. something like that and try to push an industry in a certain direction because it it kind of devalues everything it, god i just don't understand the thought process behind that and i, I get that you want to take shots of playstation and this that and the other and they don't love it and whatever else look that's fine but like what is this hump you're talking about like it it feels more like he's trying to convince everybody that he's the smartest person in the room and he's correct and maybe it plays out that way. I don't know, but yeah, you can't just, you can't just, God, it's, so, it's such a stupid thing to say. Like to say it's a piece of plastic to plug into your television, it just pulls the rug out from all the credibility you're building up to. Like if you, if that's how you feel about it, then why are you bothering? I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's, that's a good point. Actually, I had never considered that, but that sounds like one hell of a thing to play. Like to say, like you said about your product and, I get what he's trying to do. Like at some point you're trying to will things into existence. Right. And obviously you're pushing your narrative, you're pushing your vision, your direction, whatever. But I think for Xbox, maybe that strategy makes sense for others. It doesn't. What I think is more likely is that we see not less console exclusives for, from PlayStation, but I do think that we, we see the direction that we're heading. Now we start to see, more games come to PC. We start to see less game. We start to see less console exclusive games, maybe in the sense that they're going to come to PC day and date. So we're going to have game releases on PS5 and PC the same day, but we're not necessarily going to see the end of platform exclusive games where all of a sudden, you know, uncharted is going to release on Xbox. I don't think we're going to see that at least not from PlayStation. I think we're just going to see that kind of PC and, and PS5 parody. Now, with that said, I 100% think that Xbox would love to put their games on PlayStation. I think that at some point they might try to put some form of Game Pass on PlayStation. I think all of that would be, they'd be open to that. So I think those are all possibilities, but I just don't think that Phil can just will his strategy into existence for these other competing companies no matter how much he wants to. Yeah, that's all he's doing. Like, he's just trying to talk into existence. And like you said, I could see PlayStation having PC deals where you can play it on PC, but that doesn't mean you can play it on Game Pass on PC. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, it's hard to imagine that it doesn't exist anymore. Because if you're going to put everything on everything, like we said, then it doesn't matter what you get. Then what's yeah. the point of having a console? At that point, just... I don't know, at that point, you could just literally have a PC with different passes on it. Like, it's just, I don't get it. How does that help him make money? Like, it makes sense for them to put Xbox stuff on PlayStation because they're trying to make money, and PlayStation is where you're going to make the money at right now. Like, that makes more right. sense to me. Like, why why would PlayStation jump into his strategy when the strategy is working just fine? But none of, none of that makes sense. Number seven, we also have a shit ton of news nuggets here, Travis. And I mean a shit ton. So feel free to jump in here wherever you please. Our first nugget, HBO released the first official footage for their television adaptation of The Last of Us this week. A 20 second clip appears at the end of a montage promoting their upcoming shows. We still don't have a release date for the show, but HBO executive, executive Casey Boys has previously suggested it would be in the early part of 2023. The teaser looked fucking awesome. I cannot wait for this show. It looks so good. I know you don't give a fuck. Yeah, you just let me know. 15 minutes, you don't give a fuck. Yeah, just send me an email after the meeting. <laughs> sure thing, dick. Next nugget, Bungie announced the next Destiny 2 DLC called Lightfall. They previously mentioned Lightfall. It will launch on February 28th. Everything's coming out that month per usual. Bungie also announced that all expansions are free to play over the next week. And that it will no longer sunset any expand expansions, excuse me, to the game moving forward. Also, Gran Turismo 7 received another update this week, Travis, that added four new cars. The McLaren MP4 slash four, whatever that means, 88. <laughs> the, the Pontiac GTO, the Judge 69. Mm -hmm. Nice. The Porsche Cayman GT4 16. And the Di Tommaso Mangusta Christian Dior. Whatever the fuck that is. The update also added three new layouts to the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, and increased pricing on cars per usual. So what the fuck is happening here? Yeah, Catalonia. Oh, okay. The Porsche is cool. <laughs> uh, the judge is cool. And 
the the McLaren the McLaren is an F one car. It's pretty legendary. That that one's actually pretty cool. Okay. Nothing new there. The the it the hey look the online stuff's working well. So that's all we needed. It's fine. They, they just keep adding cars. Eventually they'll have some good ones and bad ones. But as long as we can race online and it's usable, cool. Next nugget. Speaking of Naughty Dog, they revealed the full list of accessibility features on the PlayStation blog this week, and one of the coolest is the ability for dialogue to be outputted through the DualSense controller's haptic feedback to help hard of hearing players understand the nuance of the dialogue so they can make the dialogue come through the vibrations of the controller. That's pretty wild. I enjoy this. Yeah, that's. I, I think I might do that just to see what the fuck that means. Yeah, you can't hear very well anyway, so. True. I'm deaf as fuck. Also, <laughs> also, website Video Games Chronicle reported that PlayStation VR 2 will be playable for the first time next month at Tokyo Game Show. Here we go. PlayStation and publisher Capcom have partnered to show off a Resident Evil Village demo for the headset. That'll be cool. That's interesting. Get those well, you want to shit yourself titties. in public, you go do that. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, see those titties, and if you want to shit yourself in public, just go to Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> Also, Sony is once again being sued for anti-consumer practices, this time to the tune of 5 billion British pounds in the UK. Like 30 bucks. Suit, Yeah, so like $30. The suit, like 40 cheeseburgers. The suit is brought by <laughs> consumer rights campaign. <laughs> the suit is brought by consumer rights campaigner Alex Neal, who also coaches Sunderland FC. And he alleges that Sony is in breach of the competition law by demanding a cut of every purchase made on the PlayStation Store. The suit claims that UK-based players have been quote-unquote overcharged for digital game purchases by the five billion pounds over the last six years. Yeah, but he can keep it. He can, only Alex gets the five billion pounds, <laughs> not the rest of the players. <laughs> this yeah. is a bold strategy, and this also is going to go nowhere. nowhere. You know why I want to watch this? You know why I want to watch this court proceeding? Why? Like, oh, wait, these cunts. Like, that's the whole thing in my head. <laughs> they all are cognizant and they talk like that. It'll be great. Uh, um, oh, mate, you're right, cunt. Can I tell you a quick story about Spain and um, and um, study abroad? From okay. Um, a guy, a guy I work with. <laughs> long story short, a guy I work with knew Spanish, studied abroad, got paid to go to college, went over there because he got paid. Basically, everybody got families to stay with. He and his roommate stayed with this old woman, this old Spanish woman in like you know Barcelona, and he said for two weeks for lunch she would butter two sides of the, both sides of the bread and put ham on it that was their lunch was oh buttered my ham God. sandwiches and Get then the fuck out. and then for dinner she would make them ramen and put hot dogs in it and uh, said, so they oh my god he said so they complained to like the program director who came over there and just apparently wore this lady out and the woman said why didn't you tell me you didn't like what you made you're american i thought you just ate hot dogs <laughs> That's so good. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, said, I thought you could say hot dogs and cheeseburgers. And I was like, she's amazing. And That's she's awesome. not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. I would love to hear what other, like other oh. things like that, that other, <laughs> other countries think about hey, us. At least we don't call our $20 notes a, a fucking pineapple Australia. <laughs> <laughs> did they do that you can't I, believe a dollar you do but you'll believe a 20 dollar bill is called a pineapple i googled it it said that a hundred dollar bill is called a jolly green giant <laughs> get the fuck out i need okay ryan if you're still listening can you confirm these now for us this is not real this Dude, is not real I, I don't believe that for a second if, if i couldn't love australia more <laughs> i already do it's let's such move a there. Place. if they didn't have big gigantic fucking spiders i might do it yeah if they weren't a whole day away I'd be, i would go yeah, they weren't in the future. I don't know how to get to the future. I don't know either. They have, they have really big fucking knives. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Crocky, this is annoying. All right, here we go. Next nugget. Spider-Man Remastered is PlayStation's fastest selling PC game in the United Kingdom, with first week sales 26% above their last PC release, which was none other than God of War. So doing pretty well. Netflix's Horizon Zero Dawn series will be helmed by Steve Blackman, the showrunner of popular series The Umbrella Academy. That's pretty good. I'm interested to see what this like, what this looks like. I think this could be oh. very. I don't know. Something about it is interesting to me as a series. Yeah, I agree. Also, Yakuza creator Tosu, Toshihiro Nagoshi, who is now working on a new IP at his newly founded Nagoshi Studio, 
says that he wants his next game to be, quote, violent and silly like a Tarantino movie, end quote. He also told German publication four players that fans won't have to wait long to find out more about the game. Saudi Arabia's General Authority for Competition is the first global regulatory board to approve Microsoft's $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Of course they are. Um, However, Travis, the British Competition and Markets Authority reportedly has expanded their investigation into the deal, and their September 1st deadline to issue a decision has likely been delayed. But then it's not a deadline. (laughs) Right. It's not a deadline if you can just push it back. That's some corporate bullshit if I've ever heard it. Also, Ubisoft might be developing a new game based on Marvel's Blade if social media posts from what appears to be performance capture actors working on the unannounced game are to be believed. One of the actors appears to be holding a clapper board, the production listed as Marvel in one photo, while tagging Ubisoft and Blade film director Bassam Bossum, Tariq in the post. Bossum Tariq. For their part, Ubisoft has since publicly denied the rumors. So, we'll see. This, is this Wesley Snipes' Blade? Correct. That, Correct. That's a Marvel character? It is. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I thought, we thought the Black Panther was the first like, <laughs> black superhero. It was Blade this whole time. It was Wesley the whole time. Also, Sega, or Sega, or Sega, is joining the film adaptation craze. Travis, that is running through the game industry at the moment. Tell me about it. Announcing plans to develop movies for two 1990s games called Space Channel 5 and Comics Zone with an X. (laughs) Toru Nakahara, who produced the two Sonic the Hedgehog movies for Sega, will be producing both adaptations. So if we thought Gravity Rush and Days Gone were bad, here we go with these. These are infinitely worse. Also, Jeff Keighley announced that the Game Awards 2022 will be held in person yet again this year in Los Angeles and take place on Thursday, December 8th. Multiverses has now reached 20 million players since its open beta launch on July 26th after just crossing 10 million players in the last couple of weeks. In other Multiverses news, the latest patch has buffed Finn, Arya Stark, and Harley Quinn while nerfing Iron Giant. Incredible numbers. The latest Final Fantasy XIV update called Buried Memory has added a farming simulator to the game as well as the ability to play more of it solo. I'm, I, I like this. For all you fucking nerds. Hey, look, the idea of being... Just a nice old Japanese man tending to my rice farm is like, just seems very peaceful and nice. That's fair. That is fair. Also, Resident Evil 7 executive producer Jun Takeuchi, I killed, I murdered that, revealed that Capcom originally wanted the game to be a live service title with online multiplayer and microtransactions. Dodged a bullet there. Both Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 have been rated by the ESRB, and interestingly, the Warzone 2 rating seems to reveal that the heavily rumored Escape from Tarkov style game mode called DMZ will be a part of Warzone 2 as it is not referenced in the Modern Warfare 2 rating. However, Tom Henderson did clarify that he is hearing that it is included in the base game as well. So, we'll see. Following up on last week's news that Embracer Group has had moved a project between developers, which we said was KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic from Aspire, to Saber Interactive. Website Bloomberg is now reporting just that. Knights of the Old Republic has been moved from Aspire Media to one of Saber Studios in Eastern Europe, and the game will likely take at least two more years to complete, according to Bloomberg sources. Developer DICE has announced their plans for Battlefield 2042 Season 2 this week, which includes a new map, a new specialist named Crawford, new weapons, new vehicles, two existing map reworks, and further improvements. Season 2 launches on August 30th. More importantly, however, is that with Season 3, DICE will be bringing back classes, meaning Assault, Engineer, Support, Recon, which specialists and their gear will be siloed into. Very stoked about all this. Why why do we need classes again? People are bitching about it because they don't like the specialists and they they don't like that you can just use whatever equipment on any specialist. Oh. Next nugget, EA Sports has announced partnerships with Scottish professional soccer teams Celtic FC and Rangers FC. Both clubs will have their players scanned into the game and likely their stadiums as well in future games. Love that. After the recent sell of three Western development studios, publisher Square Enix is working to establish a new studio in Canada called Studio Onoma, according to a pending application listed on the Canadian Trademarks database. Apparently, Square also established a new London-based publisher back in April, 
called Square Enix Nuco, which is who filed the Studio Anoma trademark. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're selling all these people, but then they're making a new studio in Canada. It doesn't make any sense. They literally just sold a studio in Canada. Also, the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy will have an exclusive quest on PlayStation consoles, according to developer Avalanche Games. And it is unclear at the moment, but the $300 collector's edition may also come with an exclusive quest. Better come with fucking something. <laughs> it's got a floating wand. I know that. It, what do you mean, a floating wand? I don't know. It floats like it's some type of magnet shit. Like there's like a book and then there's like this one thing and you set it over and it just floats. You set it over a, a pad? You set it over like a book. It comes with like a book. Oh, that's not exciting. Wand. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. I think I it's just you a it just floated naturally. I'm like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. I think you it's know. just a magnet trick. Yeah. Magnets don't impress me. Yeah. Me either. Fuck magnets. Fuck the <laughs> North and the South Pole. Also, 2K Sports detailed the plethora of changes and additions coming to NBA 2K23's My Team mode this year. Most notable is that the mode will no longer include player contracts, meaning that all player cards can be used in perpetuity. 2K is also giving Triple Threat Online co-op functionality and is making the popular clutch time mode of it uh, offline capable. I'm, uh, they've got me. They fucking got me. I'm, I'm right? gonna, I know. All this sounds awesome. Everything that they detailed, and there's a lot. Mm-hmm. And you combine that with what we know about the franchise mode with the old eras and stuff, and I'm 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 in. Yeah, the presentation looks cool too. Yeah, I'm glad contracts are gone. They finally listened to somebody. I, I don't know what clutch time is. I don't remember that at all. I tried it like once or twice. You you play like one five minute quarter. You have a four point line, and there's like a 14 second shot clock, so it's just like really quick, and you gotta you gotta win basically. Also, the developers of cult hit PlayStation RPGs Wild Arms and Shadow Hearts are partnering together on what is the first ever double Kickstarter campaign where players can choose to support one or both of two new JRPG projects with stretch goals benefiting both. The two games are called Armed Fantasia and Penny Blood, and the Kickstarter will launch on August 29th. Yeah, based off names, I'm going Penny Blood. You're gonna you're gonna put your your money behind Penny Blood. Yeah, it, Fantasia. I, just, I hate that word. Hmm. You don't like that movie as a kid? Nope. That's why I hate that word. Oh. Wasn't wow. there also a singer called Fantasia? Maybe. Rank Possibly. her above the movie, but <laughs> and then this game will be below below her, but above the movie also. Now I have three oh. Fantasias to hate. <laughs> Jeez. Also, a gameplay clip of the next Need for Speed game leaked this week. And it was literally a car. It was four seconds of a car crashing into a building. That was it. And Giant Bomb reporter Jeff Grubb also said that the game has been internally delayed by a month from November to December as developer Criterion is slightly delayed after finishing their work on Battlefield 2042. Netflix announced that Francis Lawrence will direct their upcoming live-action film adaptation of Bioshock. Lawrence previously directed I Am Legend and The Hunger Games Catching Fire. The script will be written by Michael Green, who worked on Logan, Blade Runner 2049, and the TV show American Gods. There's so many talented people now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so every every time I see things like this, I'm like, oh, this this could be good because you know those are decent movies. Those those, American Gods. Everybody likes that show. Like, I don't know. It's just hard to. I know everything won't be won't be good, but it just seems like every time we hear about something from Netflix, it's decent people. Yeah. Except for 20 minutes ago where I made noises at those people I'd never heard of. Also, Creative Assembly, the developers of Total War and the upcoming heist shooter Hyenas, announced that they are working on a new action game at their Sophia studio. Website GamesIndustry.biz reported that both Project Cars and Project Cars 2 will be delisted from sale in the coming months, according to developer Slightly Mad Studios. The removal is due to expiring car and track licenses, The games will still function in full, including online multiplayer after they are removed from storefronts. Project Cars gets delisted on October the 3rd and Project Cars 2 on September the 21st. Publisher Bandai Namco told GamesIndustry.biz in an interview that they are working behind the scenes to insulate themselves from the flurry of mergers and acquisitions taking place across the industry by acquiring the rights to IP that they have published on behalf of their developer partners. That's one interesting way to to fight back. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Bandai Namco also filed new trademarks this month for Time Crisis. Let's fucking go. And still, oh. Gunner. Time Crisis. Dope. Yeah, it would. Where do you get Netflix adaptation? <laughs> God, no shit. 
Also, Embracer Group announced that its acquisition of Crystal Dynamics, IDOS Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, along with their various IPs, has officially completed. Publisher Tiny Build has acquired Bossa Studios IPs, including Surgeon Simulator, <laughs> I Am Fish, and I Am Bread for $3 million. I Am Job. They also acquired a Russian developer, Conva Games, for $5.4 million, who is known for, get this, Despotism 3K and the upcoming Despots game. Nice. Seems like a hell of a time to buy a Russian studio who's making a game called Despots Game. What do I know? <laughs> also, website Push Square reported that after last week's news that the PC version of Death Stranding is coming to Xbox Game Pass, that the Japanese giant had nothing to do with it. In a statement to the website, SIE said, quote, Matters relating to the PC release of Death Stranding are managed by Kojima Productions and 505 Games. SIE has no involvement in this promotion, end quote. Another reason, like, how did they let this happen? How did they sign a contract where they had no control over this? I don't it's know. It's very strange. I think mean, Kojima yeah, maybe just throws his dick around on PlayStation, like, whatever. That is true. That is true. He, he is, he's a weird dude. Next nugget, Rainbow Six Siege Year 7, Season 3. We'll get a new operator called Grim and a new map called Stadium. Destiny 2 is getting Fortnite content in case you needed to vomit. And in, in a reverse move, Destiny 2 content will be heading to Fortnite and Fall Guys. Chinese developer Game Science released more footage of their action-adventure game Black Myth Wukong this week. If you're interested, it looks dope. Didn't used to look dope. Along those lines, publisher Nexon has shared a three-minute gameplay trailer for its awesome-looking Unreal Engine 5 four-player, free-to-play co-op shooter, The First Descendant. And that also looks fucking dope. I need to send that to you guys. I forgot. A demo for Square Enix published JRPG Valkyrie Elysium has been discovered in the PSN backend by PlayStation Game Size. The game itself releases on September the 29th. City building game City Skylines is getting a new expansion called Plazas and Promenades at, on PS4 at some point in the future. Developer Polyarch teased that their next game or that their game Moss Book 2 will make its way to PSVR 2 when the headset launches next year. Roller Dome publisher Private Division provided a statement to Push Square clarifying the PlayStation Plus premium game trial debacle, writing, quote, The PlayStation Store page displays a one-hour estimation for Roller Dome's trial length. The actual playtime limit for the trial is 35 minutes, which provides an introductory experience akin to a demo, end quote. So the, the fault was not PlayStation's on that. It's actually intentional by Private Division. So I guess we can cut PlayStation a break on that one. Also, developer NetherRealm announced that Mortal Kombat 30th Anniversary Ultimate Bundle for PS5. It will include the Ultimate Edition of Mortal Kombat 11 and the 4K Ultra HD version of 2021's Mortal Kombat film for $35. The lead developer on mega-hit roguelike game Dead Cells has gone solo and has announced plans to bring his 2D action-adventure firefighting game Nuclear Blaze to PS4 and PS5 sometime early next year. Ground-based cooperative FPS Skirt Ritual, the spiritual successor to Made of Skirt, will come to PS4 and PS5 in the first quarter of next year. Or <laughs> next year, as I have here. <laughs> First-person dungeon-crawling hotel management game, management sim, excuse me, Bloody Hell Hotel, great fucking name, was announced <laughs> to be in development for consoles. This game looks pretty cool, actually. People were skeptical that it was actual real gameplay, though. Like, a lot of people were like, calling out this developer they didn't believe that it was real gameplay which i don't quite get also publisher calypso media announced that railway and economic strategy game sequel railway empire 2 will be coming to ps5 at some point in the future hmm, look at that you'd, yeah. be, you'd be a real rockefeller people love trains or was that vanderbilt you'd be somebody <laughs> you'd be one of those old timers sony will be bringing the playstation tournaments feature to ps5 in the near future Tournaments will now be incorporated into the PS5 Control Center. More tournaments with lower player counts will be held in an, in an effort to shorten the length of contests, and real-time match reporting will be included as well. The PlayStation Tournaments feature will come first to the PlayStation 5 beta program in the coming weeks. Sounds kind of neat. I'm not, I'm not playing that shit. Can I take it off? Oh. What fucking tournament am I playing in? I don't know. We might play in like a 2K tournament or something. Oh, maybe really? It, maybe you'll do a Gran Turismo one. We already have, I have races online. I don't need to be in a tournament. <laughs> also, Morty officially joined the Multiverses character roster this week. 
and publisher Toge Productions and Indonesian developer Mojikin have delayed pixel art slice of life game A Space for the Unbound due to a dispute with Western publishing partner P-Cube, which Toge Productions claims has withheld a diversity grant that the British publisher received on behalf of Mojikin. So some drama. Developer Munfish released a new gameplay trailer for their Bioshock-inspired first-person shooter Atomic Heart and reiterated that it will be releasing late this year. And that game looks fucking awesome. It looks so fucking good. Hope it makes it. Free-to-play dodgeball game Knockout City will host a Teenage Mutant Ninja, Turtle, Ninja Turtles crossover for its seventh season. EA Sports announced that NHL 23 will launch on October 14th for PS4 and PS5. Anaheim Dunk Ducks, Anaheim Ducks, <laughs> Anaheim Ducks phenom Trevor Zagross and Canadian national team forward Sarah Nurse will star as cover athletes. A third entry in the Voice of Card series of games from Square Enix has been discovered by Twitter handle PlayStation Game Size. Martial arts brawler Sifu, or Sifi as I have here, is getting a big summer update this week on August 31st. It will include a bunch of new gameplay modifiers like Unlimited Health, for instance. Website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that insider Tom Henderson claims PS5's Discord integration will be releasing in the coming months. According to his sources, the functionality is incoming alongside system version 7.0, with version 6.0 currently scheduled for mid-September. New rumors from insider Nick Baker and occasional leaker Dusk Gollum claim that a PlayStation showcase is scheduled for September, with Baker saying that he was told September the 8th because PlayStation wants to go before Disney and Marvel's event the ninth hmm i mean that sounds awesome but i also just don't i don't feel like playstation wants to be sandwiched between anybody like mm-hmm. I feel like they just want like their own week or a few days but we'll see do you know blade is a marvel's character <laughs> are you still hung up on this <laughs> that's just it's just weird he's not a fucking <laughs> superhero he says blade he's not he's like a vampire or whatever <sighs> yeah he's like a black wolverine but not as cool yeah well what can you do not as cool because of his powers, not because he's black. Like, calm down. <laughs> Next nugget, insider Jeff Grubb claims that Respawn Entertainment's Star Wars Jedi Survivor is releasing sometime in March. Developer Techland has rolled out the Dying Light community update number one, or game, game version 1.016. Dying Light 2 is out, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Dead Island, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was like, What? <laughs> so the new update for Dying Light 2 added VRR support for PS5 for up to 120 frames per second, the new balanced graphical mode, and adjustments to the existing performance and quality modes, as well as general bug fixes. Very excited about that. I may have to play that without Jacob. I don't know if I can wait much longer. Welcome. <laughs> Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. Smite, Final Fantasy XIV, Apex Legends, F122, No Man's Sky, Grid Legends, Destiny 2, Genshin Impact, Multiversus, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered on PC, Rust Console Edition, Dauntless, Path of Exile, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Warzone, Gran Turismo 7, and Dying Light 2. Is, is, Dauntless, is Dauntless a faction on Hunger Games? I don't think so. Uh, I don't you know think there's another Hunger Games movie coming out? No, I did not. It's all preview You're done it. You're down some wormhole over there, aren't you? I don't know. <laughs> also, Koei Tecmo has partnered with Electronic Arts to develop a brand new IP, according to journalist Jeff Grubb. He also says it should be announced sometime in September. Middle Ages survival game at Medieval Dynasty was announced to be coming to PS5 on October the 6th. I'm really intrigued by this game. Like You like start with as just a dude, and you like make a camp, and then all of a sudden you have a, a town, and you have like like a hamlet mm. or whatever. And, like. You can build it up to like a small kingdom, I guess. It sounds really cool. I might have to keep on like, that. I want to see what it looks like. Is it graphically like cartoony or is it more like... It's like chivalry. Okay, that could be cool. Yeah, I'll send you a trailer. It's kind of neat. Also, PGA Tour 2K23, which we talked about last week on the show, but we failed to mention that it will launch on October the 14th, the same day as NHL 23, which is odd. It's coming to both PS4 and PS5 with various editions, of course one of which will give you three days early access and pre-orders will also give you Michael Jordan as a playable golfer. And he looks just like you would think with the boonie hat and everything. He just doesn't have a cigar. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Does he get sucked into one of the holes by the Looney Tunes? (laughs) (laughs) That'd be awesome. 
<laughs> Next nugget, a new leaked in-game screenshot seems to indicate that The Last of Us Part 1 on PS5 will have an unlocked frame rate mode targeting up to 120 frames per second. PlayStation has also whipped up an additional batch of the Firefly editions for the game, and they will be sold exclusively on the PlayStation website. And if I was a really good PlayStation podcast co-host, I would have put this up with the other Last of Us news, but it's hard to keep up with all this shit, guys, so sue me. Also, website Gamatsu reported that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night has added a new crossover boss area based on hit indie game Journey, which is super odd. Dungeon building management game Dungeons 4 was announced for <coughs> PS5 and it will launch sometime in 2023. 3D platformer Cuckoo's Lost Pets will launch sometime in December on PS4 with a PS5 version coming in 2023. Sports arcade party game Toy Sports was announced for PS4 and PS5. It will launch sometime next year. Roguelite hack and slash action game Tameless was announced for PS4 and PS5, and it will release sometime in 2023. Publisher Microids has delayed Flashback 2 from this winter to a vague 2023 release window. It will come to both PS4 and PS5 whenever it does launch. Story-based farming sim Dorymon Story of Seasons Friends of the Great Kingdom will launch on November, tw- on November 2nd excuse me, worldwide on PS5. Fast-paced Metroidvania Vernal Edge was announced for PS4 by developer Hello Penguin Team, but no release date was given. <laughs> Three, 3D roguelite platformer Tower Princess will launch on PS4 on September the 8th. Medieval Combat Simulator and RPG Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord will come to PS4 and PS5 on October the 25th. Mountain Blader. <laughs> Tokyo-based publisher developer Marvelous has filed a trademark for something called A Silent Hope in Japan. Hybrid slasher shooter Wanted Dead from the makers of Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive has delayed has been delayed out of 2022 and will now launch on February 14th on PS4 and PS5. Yeah, that game looks cool. Yeah, yes, I did watch a trailer for that. That game looks pretty cool. Adventure game at 1010 Reporter Cigars of the Pharaoh will launch on PS4 and PS5 sometime in 2023. <laughs> Developer Megapixel Studio shared a new teaser trailer for Fear Effect Reinvented, which is a remake of the original game from 2000. The studio also teased that the game is coming sooner than you think on PS4. Side-scrolling action adventure game Blind Fate, Edo no Yami, Edo no Yami, will launch on PS4 and PS5 on September the 15th. Single-player and online cooperative action RPG The Last Oraku was announced to be launching on PS5 on October the 13th, and that game looks kind of interesting as well. It kind of reminds me of uh, Kingdom, Kingdoms of Amalur, Re-Reckoning, or whatever. Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning, yeah. First person, first person narrative thriller The Gap was announced for PS5 from developer Label This. It is planned to launch in the first quarter of next year. Publisher Modus Games announced that hand-drawn 2D Metroidvania After Image will launch on PS4 and PS5 this winter. Was cool. First person narrative adventure game The Last Worker was announced for PS5, but no release date was given. Twin Stick Shoot 'em Up Never Awake will release on PS4 and PS5 in the first quarter of next year. Dark the Dark Pictures anthology The Devil and Me will launch on November 18th on PS4 and PS5. And this is based on uh H. H. Holmes's uh murder hotel or murder mansion book Ooh. or something like that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. I've always wanted to see the inside of the of the of the hotel, so maybe they actually did that. Yeah, that's what it is. And so not they said the ahead. devil. The devil in me was a a very famous quote he made after he got arrested in his confessions. No, oh, well, that might that game might be for you then. Also, side scrolling action adventure puzzle game at Tesla Grad will launch on PS4 and PS5 next spring. Mm-hmm. That's about a town in Russia named for Nicholas <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> 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 oh, twin! The the original game is on PS Vita. Uh, twin stick vertical scrolling shoot 'em up game, Signy All Guns Blazing, <laughs> will release on PS Five sometime next year. Rhythm fighting game God of Rock was announced for PS Four and PS Five. It will release sometime this winter. Pixel art Metroidvania game Nine Years of Shadows was announced for PS Four, but no release date was given. God, there's so many Metroidvania games this week. On the news, Metroidvania side-scrolling action game Ghost Song will launch on PS4 and PS5 on November the 3rd. That game looks very cool. You should look that up. Publisher Team 17 will release single-player fishing adventure game Dredge for PS4 and PS5 sometime in 2023. 
publisher Thunderful Games have delayed Dodge 'em Up game Swordship from September to December on PS4 and PS5. Developer Drinkbox Studios announced a new DLC for Nobody Saves the World called Frozen Hearth. It will launch on September the 13th. Third-person shooter Gungrave Gore will launch on November 22nd on PS4 and PS5. And finally, Travis, mercifully, free-to-play online action RPG Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis comes to PS4 on August 31st. And that is all for the news this week, and I'm going to turn it over to Travis now for an almost equally as long new game releases list. On the 22nd, we have Spectre Woods on the 23rd. Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, which will just piss me off. Fallen Legion, <laughs> Rise to Glory, and Fallen Legion, Revenants. Yeah. Uh, Midnight Fight Express, Saints Row, Yars Recharged. On the 24th, we have Alchemist Simulator, Kid Ball Adventure, Repentless, Soul Hackers 2, the, and The Llama L. On the 25th. <laughs> We have Arcade Archives Super Volleyball, F1 Manager 2022, Fall of Porcupine Prologue, Bump Jump, Gloom and Doom, Horror Fun, I Was a Teenage Ex-Colonist, okay. uh, uh-huh. Idol Manager, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Kobayashi, Sakru S2, Trogon <laughs> Breath. The fuck is that? <laughs> SD Gundam Battle Alliance. Uh, uh, Shin Chan, Me and the Professor on Summer Vacation. Yummy. Uh, Zingon. On the 26th, we have <laughs> Aquadine Back Again. No, sorry, those two different. Aquadine and then Back Again. Uh, Blob uh, Quest. Breaking Enigma. NHRA Championship Drag Racing Speed for All. That'll sell three copies. Pac Man World <laughs> Repack. And the company man. The two biggest games here are obviously Saints Row and yeah. F1 Manager's been getting a lot of pub. So I would say those are the two biggest games on the list this week. Yeah, I agree 100%. Did you, did you end up, you said you pre ordered F1 Manager? Yeah, I haven't played it yet, obviously, but um, I've watched yeah. some gameplay online. It looks, it's fucking like it's super deep. Like it's, <laughs> there's a lot going on. So it'll take a while to learn, but. Yeah, there's stuff. There's stuff in that game that I I know a little bit about F1 and enough to like keep it on the rails. I think if you are just new to the sport and have no idea, I don't know if you can play the game. Like, there's it's no so way. much to learn. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. I uh, I'm very excited for you to play it and to hear you talk about it on the show. Also, that is the game. That is a game that people would will want to watch on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So you should you should record yourself playing some of it yeah i saw a guy comment about like you go you look at the strategy like just really quickly there was uh he was running a race and he was on mediums and everybody else started the race on softs Mm -hmm. and he was like this is what i was worried about that the computer wouldn't have a varied strategy it's like have you watched fucking racing like they all start on the same tire like what are you talking about you're the fucking moron who'd use the wrong tire like that's on you bro right right even I know that just from playing F1, which we haven't played in a while. But anyway, so let's uh, begin to wrap the show up here, Travis, like we always do by discussing what we have been playing and anything that we're looking forward to. What do you got? Um, I still had time to kill one night, so I played the show beta again, and I put I put everything on on like beginner, and um, I scored twelve runs in a row, and I was like, okay, it's too God. easy. Um, I finally found camera angles that worked for me batting and pitching, so I made that oh, progress. Oh, I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of bumped it up a little bit, because I had it on dynamic earlier, and it was like, it just felt like dynamic aired on the side of, of you know, me losing by 20 runs. Like, that's what it decided. I don't know, man. It's 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 okay. It's like... You know, when you're in the middle of scoring 12 runs, you're like, this is kind of fun. And then on the 12th <laughs> run, you're like, this is, why am I doing this? This is stupid. Right. Whatever. It's fine. It's, I think if you really like baseball, like it, it's probably a great game. It, it's just, it's just not for me. Uh, multiverses. Started playing with Batman. He's pretty fun. Um, I enjoy the grapple hook a lot. 
I think I think one night we lost like four matches in a row. It was pretty brutal. <laughs> we did. And then the next night, solid. We were really good. So, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, I think I'm going to buy Batman when I have enough credits for that. Um, I'm excited to try the new characters just to see what they're about. You never know. Ben looks cool. I really wish they would fucking nerf the bitch with the hands that fire at you and, and Wonder Woman because it annoys me. Uh huh. I was getting super mad with Batman because I kept doing these kick ass moves and then like we're in the Bat Cave and the fucking car would be in the way. It's like why? <laughs> why is this a yeah, thing? Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, right, ricocheting off shit. Yeah. I still like playing with Bugs Bunny. I just like shooting rockets at people. It's a lot of fun, especially when you time it right. Like if you could oh, hit yeah. them in the air and shoot the rocket straight up, they it, it's an automatic knockout if you can it's hard i've only got to work like twice but anyway um we played some battlefield i put up some clips again you know the the saw rifles are fun like the scar is really good the ac24 is good i enjoy both of those a lot the dm7 is good the bsv is good or whatever it's called um and the 50 cal is nice with the acog as long as you can kind of like once you get used to yeah like how to aim for farther away it's really nice uh, i've been enjoying that a lot i'm super excited about season two i can't wait to get those new guns God, going so fucking good i'm excited about the firearms the new map i'm excited to see how cool that is it'll be it would be nice to have two proper maps um even though actually we were playing the one with the big stadium in the middle and it's been nice the last couple of days so i've had a lot of fun on that one actually but anyway yeah that's all i've really had time for but i'm definitely going to play f1 manager at some point in the next couple of days yeah, you need to. Curious to hear you hear what you have to say about that. But yeah, we like you said, we played some more Battlefield. I've uh, hit level one hundred on the Battle Pass. I'm all done with the Battle Pass, ready for season two, which looks awesome. I cannot wait for that. The new weapons look cool. The new specialist, his uh, turret ability, the map looks awesome. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Very excited. Then we played more multiverses. Like you said, we were having a rough go of it that one night, and then I tried to get into ranked mode only to find out that ranked mode is actually not yet in the game. <laughs> it's apparently still coming in season one, but later, which I misunderstood is that it was already there. So it's great. It's no surprise that it's had 20 million players in my opinion. It's very good. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. We talked about that too. When it first came out, we're like, dude, this is going to be like, this oh, has yeah. to be amazing. Yeah. It's, it's going to be probably number one on the free to play list again next month as my, as far as downloads. I guess. And if it, if it, if it's like in the top five again in sales because they sold the founders packs, I'll, my mind will be blown. <laughs> but, uh, I also played cult, more cult of the lamb and I cannot say enough good things about this game, dude. It is without a doubt a game of the year contender. It's really special. It does. It's a mashup of things that make it palatable for someone like me who doesn't like these games where you just do shit over and over and try to beat it, you know, where you, you go in, okay, it's too hard, you die, get an upgrade, whatever. Like it is that, but to a lesser extent and it has all these other parts that it brings in. It's it, it's, it's special. So definitely recommend that. Although the latest update on PS5 has caused some graphical glitches for me, like the floor of the, like the ground does some weird shit, like pop in. And then like, I have like this, permanent like sun setting sun glare effect on my screen so i was like adjusting my tv i was like what's wrong with my tv and then i realized <laughs> that it's not my tv it's the game so in there yeah hopefully they can fix that soon i also played the fifa 23 beta and i i played it twice and on the third try it said that my saved profile da data was lost or corrupted and then it wouldn't let me make a new one so i, I just deleted that so hopefully they fix that before launch. But what I did get, what I did get to play of the game, I really enjoyed, and it actually felt feels like they're taking a leap, um, both graphically and from a gameplay standpoint. So what I played of it was very good. I'm looking forward to that yeah, quite see, a bit. I, I just like keep getting sucked in all these games I have to buy. So now I'm gonna have to get 2K, and I'm gonna have to get FIFA, and I'm gonna have to yeah. get Call of Duty. So I keep getting sucked in. That's when I, it's fall, baby. This is what we do. It's, it's what we do, baby. So anyway, the last thing I played, and we're running out of time here, is Saints Row. Came out this week, played it. Uh, I played it for about five hours, I think, maybe. I would give it, it's a it's a good game. It's not a great game at this point. I would give it like a seven. And the reason is that it needs a performance patch, first and foremost. I've there, There's no reason to have like 
frame rate issues running 1080p or 1440p on PS5. It's no excuse for that. The other reason is that the gunplay, like most reviewers have said, is very just plain. Nothing really, no, no, there's no like crunch to it, no impact to it. So the gunplay could be better and maybe they could fix that with a patch. I don't know, but the, it leaves a little bit to be desired. The AI is pretty stupid, but again, it is, <laughs> again, it is a silly ish game with a big open world sandbox. And with that said, I am having fun with it. Another, co- another complaint people have had is the dialogue. The dialogue has not bothered me to this point. I actually have found it pretty funny. <laughs> some of the stuff that the characters say, some of the stuff that the player character says, and like his reactions to situations, like something happened the other night, and my character was just like, "Oh fuck me, are you are you serious?" or something like that. And I was like, "That's exactly probably how I would react too." So I thought that was funny. Then one of the funniest things was I was driving down the road, and there was an NPC standing on a corner, and he was on his cell phone. And he was talking and I could hear him yelling and he was yelling at the automated system that you get when you call a pharmacy. (laughs) And he was going, check on prescription. (laughs) And I (laughs) lost it. I thought that was hilarious. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a seven. It's good. Not great right now. So we'll see, but uh, I'm going to keep playing it. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. I forgot one more thing to add. Did you know that um, Blade is a Marvel character? Oh my God. <laughs> We're we'll have to re- revisit this on next week's show since it's blowing your mind. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, it for us. And that's it for the show. And we'll get out of here now. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe so that you get a new episode delivered every Monday. Also, we would very much appreciate a rating or review on your podcast service or a like or comment on YouTube. It helps us out in the algorithm. So if you're listening, just take a couple seconds, hit some stars or a, a thumbs up on YouTube. Very much appreciate that. Don't forget to find us on social media, primarily Twitter, which is at the DualSense Pod. And let's talk about PlayStation or the show, or you can tell us that you enjoyed it or we suck or whatever, or something you think we should do differently. All uh, avenues are open. And then uh, finally, the most important thing potentially is that you share us with a friend or a loved one who you think may enjoy the show. Word of mouth is the most powerful form of advertising after all. So yeah, if you can just do all those tiny, minute things, nothing big, we'd be very thankful for that. So we'll get out of here. You guys have a great week. Take care, and we'll talk at you next time. Bye-bye.